fried a dick that's a sex machine to all the chicks. You're damn right. Episode two. It's time for some science. Time for some science. Yo, what up, beautiful people? We back with some more science outside, inside, at home. Safe science activities you can do with your little ones, your older ones, your moms, your pops, your grannies, your aunties, your uncles, all of them. Your community. Embrace science, technology, engineering, art, and mathematics. Steam, though. Let's get to the materials that we're going to go through today. So, first things first, an empty bottle, baking soda, vinegar, white vinegar, apple cider vinegar. Apple cider vinegar is good for your body. Uh, so, take a shot of that every morning if you can. Apple cider vinegar. Food coloring to make everything bright. I went ahead and got something that matches my shirt. A uh, little neon action. Hi. Stay blessed. Anti-acid tablets. The acid indigestion. A few balloons. <laughs> I had to do it. A cup that goes inside of a cup. <laughs> a cup that goes inside of a cup. Make sure they're not broken or they don't have any holes in it. This is plastic. This is glass. It doesn't matter the actual materials. Just a cup that goes inside of a cup. Smoke cups, just in case. You want a tall cylinder. Tall cylinder. This has a nice shape to it. A uh, little curve. She got them curves. Hi. Uh, a tea candle. Make sure that your tea candle fits over the cup that goes inside of the cup. A lighter for that tea candle. What else? What else? What else? What else? What else? Some oil. Some water. Got that water? Hey, hey, go, go away, bro. Go away, bro. I ain't got nothing to do with you right now, bro. Let me, let me, can I do science? Bro, can I do science right now? Can I do science right now? Can I do science right now? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bro, can I do science right now, please? Thank you. Go. Go find some pollen or something. Please. All right. Bruh, I'm not trying to get stung today, boy. Gosh. All right, we're back. Live and full effect, obviously. <laughs> boom. Bada bing, bada boom. All right, so first things first. We want to have our bottle not fly away if you're outside because it's windy. We don't want that action so just secure it. I'm going to toss it in my basket for now. Uh, first things first, remember about elasticity from last time. Stretch out that balloon. Uh, make sure that you can scoop in your baking soda. Scoop, 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 scoop it up. <laughs> baking soda. Uh, I didn't have a spoon, so I had to get creative. Uh, I made like a little uh, paper airplane without putting the wings down. Well, I got something like that. It's going to be an airplane spoon today. Paper airplane spoon. <laughs> Boom. See? And I can just hold it right there and scoop, scoop, scoop. All right, so we're going to get some uh, baking soda, and I'm going to just pour it in my, in my scooper, like right that, like that, see, pew, open that up, and, and the baking soda go, and go the baking soda, so now we got our baking soda in our balloon, uh, we can, <laughs> we got our baking soda secured, in our balloon, just go ahead and set that down to the side. Next, uh, open up your vinegar. Very important, uh, quick science tip. When you're dealing with liquids and you want to smell a liquid, you do not, I repeat, you do not go like this. I'm going to close it so that you know I'm not doing it. So, you do not do that. When you do that, you're putting too many aromatics into your nose. If you do that, you're going to mess up your nose. We don't want to do that. I'm going to open it and do what's called wafting in the air. Waft. Waft with me. Waft with me. <laughs> so you just bring the actual smell to you opposed to going in and going full force. Mmm, <sighs> that smells good. But nah, we don't want to do all that, bro. Just bring it to you because you don't know. This could be very, very harmful for your nose. Uh, it could break down the materials in your nose, even if it was a toxic material. Uh, that's why in science, you never eat or drink liquids because this could be easily mistaken for sulfuric acid, uh, hydrochloric acid, uh, toluene, acetone. Uh, all of these things smell very different, but they look exactly the same, other than its viscosity. 
uh, uh, another vocabulary word, viscosity, how thick is something. This, how thick is this compared to, say, some oil or some water? Uh, we, we, we get to, we'll get to that later. All right, so vinegar. Take your vinegar, pour it into your cup because it's easier to pour uh, from this opposed to this uh, into our bottle. And when you're adding food coloring, uh, you don't have to add it to the whole bottle. You can just add it out little by little. Ooh, that's a nice color. Nice. Very, very nice. Very nice. Contrast. Contrast with the white. Let's see that. Very nice. It's a little cloudy. The clouds just started to set in. But I'm going to keep rocking it out. Science style. Science style. Uh, so now, we have our vinegar. In goes the vinegar into our bottle. So do a careful pour. Uh, it's all about balance. Balance, Daniel son. Balance, Daniel son. Viscosity. How thick is your liquid? That looks pretty cool as it goes in there. All right, one take, Tony. Uh, we don't want this to fly away, so just secure it in the bag. Hey, secure the bag. Secure the bag alert. Um, next. Bonnet style. <laughs> you know what's up. Bonnet style. You know what's up. Uh, go ahead and just snatch it right over the top of your forehead. Uh, you don't want to come down too far. Look like it's over her eyes. She can't even see in her sleep. Dude, that's like bondage for real. Uh, but let's go ahead. Well, no, it's cool. Yeah, this is cool for this one. For this go ahead and just bring it on down. Bring it on down around and then make sure it's nice and snug right up first. Snug as a bug. Uh, and then, you know, you can just... Wee, 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 wee. But we don't want none of them solids to come down. Remember, our solids are right here. You can do that uh, as long as you do it consistently. Your solids aren't going to drop down in there, as you can see. But the liquid does rise uh, because this cylinder is allowing it to funnel. Uh, kind of like cyclones. Uh, kind of like uh, tornadoes. Uh, that's another experiment for another day, for another episode. All right. Now, what we want to do, we want to invert because we want this baking soda to react with our uh, vinegar. This is an acid-base reaction. Uh, for those that are learning right now, acid-base reaction. Which one do you think is the acid? Which one do you think is the base? This one's the base. This is the acid. Uh, acetic acid, actually. Uh, vinegar is another name uh, for acetic acid. Uh, that's just the power of nomenclature. You heard? Nomenclature, another word that you can Google. Google it, nomenclature, the art of naming things. All right, here we go. Let's start in five. Of course, we always start from five. Five, in five, three, two, and one. So then we invert and then allow all of that to bubble, bubble, toil in trouble. So this reaction occurs very, very rapidly. So it's very important that you hold tight because this could seep out some liquid, and we don't want to make a mess where we don't want to make a mess. But you can see, and you can shake it up a little bit. Just make sure you keep this nice and pinched and tight. And look how much gas this is actually uh, creating. Uh, last episode, we did the uh, citric acid and baking soda, uh, and it didn't create as much uh, of a reaction. Uh, of course, we had our water as our solution to dissolve the two together to uh, make that reaction go. But here... We just use baking soda and vinegar, uh, baking soda and vinegar, yeah. So this uh, is very, very good uh, for those who are doing science experiments. And, of course, we've all known of the, uh, the volcano eruption. Uh, that's why they use vinegar and baking soda, because it instantaneously reacts. And that reaction is the eruption that everybody is so intrigued about with the... Uh, with the uh, science of creating that volcano. And then uh, for those that are thinking about the foam, thinking about the foam, thinking, th 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 thinking about the foam, um, the foam is based off of your food coloring. So whatever food coloring that you put in there, that's the foam. And then if you want to get real creative, you can do it like a spectrum, you heard? So, uh, so say you got your, your volcano, and inside you got your blue food coloring that's going to react. But then, as it erupts and rolls down the hill, it hits like a yellow patch, or a green patch, or a blue patch, and or no, not a blue patch, or a red patch. And then, that creates a rainbow. That would be a cool science project. And remember, in science, nothing is ever created or destroyed. 
uh, this gas already existed. The combining of the two created what's called carbon dioxide gas. That's what's inside of here. You feel it. This is matter. This is matter. Matter is things that take up space. For instance, solids, liquids, gases, all of that. I'll set this here just to keep it, keep it there. Keep it, keep it, keep it there. All right, but yeah, uh, increase learning. You can increase the concentration of your liquid, increase the concentration of your solid, uh, boom, solid, uh, and make this really, really fun. Different size balloons, different shape balloons. Uh, you can have different type of vinegar, have white vinegar versus apple cider vinegar. See if they react differently. But remember, make sure you keep your variable the same, consistent across the board if you're going to do compare and contrast. A variable, another vocabulary word, uh, is basically changing one parameter of your experiment uh, as you keep the others the same. For instance, you can have the same size bottle for each experiment, but one experiment the variable that you're going to change is the amount of baking soda that you add to bottle A versus bottle V, uh, or B, excuse me, B, 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 B. Uh, so, uh, and another, and the same thing with vinegar, uh, and all of that. Fun things you can do with balloons. Anti-acid tablet. Where's the sun at? Sun, come out again. So next we have our anti-acid tablet, our oil, our food coloring, whatever choice of color you like. Uh, good to switch it up. Whatever you had last time, don't use the same color. Uh, just another regular random cup and then your tall cylinder. Uh, tall cylinder stays out front because that's the beauty of it all. That's the uh, base of our experiment. Check it. So first, we're going to take our oil and our water. Uh, we don't want to put it in our cylinder just yet because we want to uh, first talk about the properties and the differences between the two. Uh, remember, viscosity. One of these liquids is more dense than the other uh, or thicker. So viscosity and density play hand in hand with one another. How thick something is and how something weighs are very, very, uh, they're, they're correlated. Uh, now we want to take our water, put our water into here. Uh, our water goes into just our random cup. Then we want to take out, You don't if you don't have a pipette, you don't have to use a pipette, you can use a spoon or just drop a little bit in there uh, drop wise. But uh, science is, this is the scientific way. Uh, so I'm going to take a drop of oil, just one drop. Well, you really can't say so I'm going to squeeze some, there we go, we got some pellets now. All right, so now, if you look in there, that oil is beaded up. It's beating up because it is basically not wanting to mix with this water. Y'all see that? The oil and water do not mix. So this is a good way to start off this experiment showing your student why the oil doesn't mix. Why does it sphere up? You know, uh, a lot of times we don't think about what is the most comfortable position for a molecule. This liquid is starting to sphere up. Uh, and you can see just like that the oil and the water don't mix the oil and the water don't mix The oil and the water don't mix and then once you got your oil with your clear water in your separate cup Take a couple drops of uh, food coloring and then watch how the actual food coloring starts to dissipate But it doesn't even contact the actual oil either see it's like the LA Lakers It's like the LA Lakers you can see now density starts to take place. Now you can see the difference, the separation of the oil and the water. To make it even more fun, that's what the cylinder is for. So next, we want to take our water. Pour in your water. Oh, too much water, too much water. You want to pour in about halfway water. Three-fourths. Let's, let's make it three-fourths. Three-fourths, three-fourths, three-fourths. Yeah, three-fourths is good. Well, no. 
half. Yeah. A little over half. A little over half is cool. Then you take your food coloring and boop, let it ooze on down. This is a good visual for your little ones who have not seen the mixing of two different liquids. Uh, we talked about how one liquid doesn't mix with another, but this liquid is actually uh, mixing into the other liquid. We call that soluble. So that's another vocabulary word, soluble. Something's ability to dissolve into another solution. Uh, most soluble things uh, have to be in the liquid or dissolved in the liquid. For instance, this is soluble in water because it will then start to break down and dissolve. Uh, this oil is not soluble in water at all because it doesn't mix. There's no way we can force it to mix unless we interject something uh, like soap. That's why we have to wash our hands. Make sure you're washing your hands. Soap is how you get that grease and that gum and that stucco and that dirt and grime off because the soap uh, pushes dirt away, repels dirt away, and it also traps dirt. Traps it, traps it, traps it, depending on what tail it's using or head, tail or head, because the soap has a head and a tail. Uh, yeah, polar and non-polar. That's another story for another day. All right, so now we have our LA Lakers set up. We got our, I'm gonna shake it a little bit just to make sure we get it nice and mixed up, mixed up, mix it up. So now we take our oil. Don't just splash your oil in there really, really fast because you're gonna basically make it beat up uh, like we talked about those spheres. Uh, you pour something in something real heavy, it starts to bubble up and uh, take more of a spherical shape. We want to slide this in because we want you to see that the liquids would rather just sit right on top. See? As I slowly apply it down the side, you can see that the yellow isn't even going down into the purple at all. At all. At all. So, yeah, you want to do your best to keep it on the uh, rim. You want it to just lightly touch the surface, and then it'll gradually grow. So now we have our yellow with our purple. Next comes the fun. This is where the science begins. Other than this, this right here, uh, the density, uh, the friction, uh, this basically, the water is so heavy and dense, it's pushing up the oil. Uh, and the oil is so lightweight, it's just resting ever so softly on that water, ever so softly. But if you come and push your finger down in there, the oil will drop down in there because force is real. Force is real. All right, so now what's going to happen is we have our anti-acid tablet. The anti-acid tablet is, all right, come on, truck, go ahead, do your thing. All right, y'all done? All right, now we have our anti-acid tablet. Our anti-acid tablet is not going to react as much with the oil. Uh, all it's going to do is get coated by the oil. And when the oil hits the water, the oil then slides off of the anti-acid tablet. And the acid, and then the anti-acid tablet is going to rest on the oil and slowly travel down the oil. As it travels down the oil, it gets coated with the oil. Then that coated, oiled anti-acid tablet rests down into the water because it's heavy. So then when it gets down into the water, of course, the oil doesn't want to react with the water. Uh, so the oil slides and beads right off of the anti-acid tablet, allowing the anti-acid tablet to then react with the water. And what happens with that? Of course, we did that last time. The anti-acid tablet starts to create what's called carbon dioxide gas. That same gas that's in our balloon over here, as you can see, still chilling with me. Uh, and now we want to do this. You can, uh, a little increased learning before you start, you can set up different versions, uh, a taller one, a smaller one. You can use one anti-acid tablet, use two. You can break it up into very, very small, fine powder to see if that works differently. Uh, you can split it in half to have more of a duality, if you would, uh, to see what one does versus the other. Uh, and then... Uh, yeah, have fun with it. I went ahead and broke it into threes so that I can have three separate, uh, if you would, bubble vessels. Yeah, these are my bubble vessels. So now I'm going to take one. Uh, first, let's just do one. I'll drop one in there. And as you see, it coated. And as it coats, you can see it starts to bubble and boil. But then, 
do that, the same gas bubbles start to do that. So now look at it. That gas is starting to generate force and pressure. And what happens is it starts to push the gas bubbles up, but the gas bubbles then get popped once they hit the air and they go back down. So this is kind of like that lava lamp uh, that used to be back in the old days, that lava lamp situation. So for LA Laker action. So just take this, um, you can soak it in the oil some more. So see, just like that, the oil comes right off and then take it and dip it down in there and boop, and it'll start to bubble again. You can see, it's like that. Let me put this in front of you so you can see. And you can see how the oil is starting to flow around, circulating, because those gas bubbles go up and pop, pushing the oil down. But the oil, remember, doesn't want to react with that water. So it also starts to float back up, as you can see. And then once all the gas is gone and popped, the liquid, even up here, this purple starts to slide back down uh, because it doesn't want to react with that oil or it'll just sit over here because it's still bubbling Once all of these bubbles are done popping You'll see that this purple starts to slide back down and even though uh, that it is uh, Up top because the water is heavier than the oil another form of increased learning for this take out a scale and measure two milliliters of oil versus two milliliters of water see which one weighs more and that way you can see the difference in the weight. Yeah, next, next experiment. In there, you see, before some in there. You can see the oil then rests. See, see like that, pour it out, the oil comes out first. Then do it like that, look. Now the purple goes right back to the bottom. So back with another experiment. So we have our two cups. Remember the one that goes inside of the cup? We need the cup that goes inside of a cup. Uh, we got our food coloring, choice of food coloring. We have our tea candle, lighter for our tea candle, and our water. Now, this reaction uh, involves a little bit of finesse. Uh, what we're going to do is create a vacuum, a suction cup, if you would. Suction cup, suction cup, suction cup. Hello, sun. The sun came out. So now we have our cup. It goes inside of a cup. Make sure that it actually fits calmly and carefully inside of a cup. You don't want to have to force it down in there. Uh, you want it just to like rest right on top. Because essentially what we're going to have to do is put this and rest this on some water and then trap it. And what that does is create a vacuum because there's gas inside of this cup that we can't see. Oxygen gas. And oxygen is important for fires to breathe. That that's the only way fires can survive, is with oxygen, fuel, and heat. Yeah, the fire triangle. Oxygen, fuel, and heat. Boom. Boom. All right. Boom. Now, we want to take our water. Take our water. We do not need a lot of water for this. So, we want to make sure this right here is ever, about like that. Yeah, that's cool. For this one, you don't need a lot of water. If you have, uh, say, a dish, like a, a platter or something, that works too. Now we want to take our food coloring and drop it on in. Ooh, that's nice. Very nice. Nice green. Ooh, I love that. I love that. That's some green, green liquid. We got our green liquid. So now what's going to happen is we have to take our tea candle. Uh, we got a tea candle because the tea candle rests and floats right on top of our uh, our water. Yeah, there it goes, it's floating. So it's, it's floating. So it's floating. Now, I got this because I'm outside and I knew that it's gonna be really windy today. So if I go down in here, I can light my candle. There we go. Without the wind actually coming and messing it up. New, so I want to get a good flame on it. So I got enough. To All right, we cool. Ah, it's getting blown out. Let's wait for this wind to stop. Please stop, wind. Still waiting. All right, let's try it again.
Uh, now, so remember, we need oxygen in order for this fire to survive. So what you want to do is take your cup that fits inside of a cup and make sure that you can try to trap that tea candle over it and push down on it. Now what's happening is it's displacing the... Wasn't a good idea to do this outside. The wind is not my friend. Wind, stop blowing. That never... All right, boom, we back. So now that I got my candle lit, we want to trap some oxygen in our cup that is going to then be consumed by our flame because remember, our flame needs oxygen in order to breathe and in order to stay lit, stay lit, stay lit. Now I'm gonna take this, remember you have your liquid. What's gonna happen is the liquid is going to rise up in the cup because it's basically taking place, the liquids, the liquids then gonna take the place of the oxygen. Here we go, we got it lit carefully, carefully over the candle without putting it out onto the water. And you'll feel it start to pull down. Boom. That candle is now inside of the cup it's not it's, it's inside of the cup that's inside of the cup not inside of this cup now uh, there's also a small layer of liquid underneath that cup so if I try to pull it up you can see that it's gonna have like a, some some type of suction remember we had oxygen that was inside of our cup that's inside of our cup that oxygen was consumed by our flame once that oxygen was consumed, something had to take place of that oxygen gas. And what, what it was, was the liquid that was resting under the candle. And then that pushed the candle up inside of our cup. And I'll show you carefully. You got to look close. I'll pull slow. So if you look, oh, and then it dropped down. But uh, that liquid was stuck in there. So the reason why it dropped down so fast, because it broke the surface tension of the other liquid that was in there. And the shoot, this is a big hefty candle. I couldn't find no other small tea candles. It works much better with a small tea candle. Of course, because a smaller tea candle is lightweight. But this whole Rona thing got all the candles gone in the store. Same experiment, different uh, outcome, of course, because the candles weigh different. This is about two times or three times the weight of one of the smaller tea candles. Just make sure that your tea candle fits inside of the cup that you're putting in your cup. You don't have to use a cup. You can use a plate, a platter, a dish, all of that. Just get creative. Get creative with it. Uh, but that was a uh, vacuum, suction, uh, something displacing one another. Because remember in science, nothing can be either created or destroyed. Now, what we have is what we have, and that's why it's very important we know and understand what the carbon footprint is. I got one right here tatted on my lab coat. It's very important that we understand and utilize our resources the right way and materials the right way because all that we have in this world is all that we have in this world. Thank you all for watching today. Share, like, subscribe, comment. Happy experimenting, safe experimenting. Signing off, Steam Chemist. See you next time.